Ladies and gentlemen, what if we were to be lost in a forest? What if we were to be stranded on an island? What if we were to go on a camping trip but we forgot some necessary items? That is why I am here today. Ladies and gentlemen, today I will be sharing with you guys three basic survival skills that we should all learn in case we find ourselves in these situations. First, first aid. Second of all, finding a resource of water and then purifying it. And last but not least, scavenging maybe for plants or animals. Without further ado, let us get into the world of survival. First of all, we can't expect hospitals to be right next door when we're in a forest. We can only rely on ourselves to help our friends and ourselves. So these three basic skills of first aid would be very helpful if you find yourself stuck in the forest and if your friend or yourself is injured. First of all would be a gash. How do you stop a gash? By creating a tourniquet. How do you create a tourniquet? A tourniquet is created or made by using a cloth and also by using a solid item such as a stick or a bar or a pipe to tighten the cloth around your arm. Place the cloth around your arm and then tighten it to stop the blood flow and then clean the gash with some clean water or any medical equipments that you have with you. Second of all would be CPR, which is also known as cardiopulmonary resuscitation. This can be carried out if your friend is uh, actually drowning or unconscious and you want that person to come back to uh, his consciousness. Basically, you have to give 30 compressions to the middle of the chest and then after 30, give two strong mouth-to-mouth -mouth breaths after tilting the chin up and pinching the nose of the victim. Repeat these steps until help arrives or until the victim's come, victim awakes from this unconsciousness. Last but not least will be broken bones or fractures. Broken bones and fractures can only heal up when the bone is aligned to its original position. So this is what you call resetting the bone. After you reset the bone, take some bandages, cloth, and also some solid items such as wood, bars, pipes to align the bone and to secure it in place until it heals up. With that, actually, ladies and gentlemen, those are the three basic tips of survival in first aid that you should know because as stated by Sean Terman in 2017, it's always better to be ready because having yourself injured in this situation is also considered as the worst, worst case scenario that can happen because it is hard to handle because lives of others and yourself actually depends on it. So it is better to face it head on with the educated, um, with any education or general information of the first aid that you have. With that, actually, ladies and gentlemen, first aid is considered very important because you can actually save life of others and also save your own life. Moving on to my next point would be to find a water resource. Water resources can be found in these three spots, basically. A river, creek, or underground spring. These three are the most reliable spots and reliable locations to get any clean water. If these three are unavailable, then you will have to resort to tapping waters from trees. Tapping waters from trees require a few equipments that are hard to get. Second, you could either dig underground. Digging underground gives you a very small chance of finding water. It goes to slim to none, so it's actually very risky. Then we could either go and test our luck, which is to collect rainwater by using a cloth or also using any empty containers that you can contain the water in. Last but not least, the last resort you can actually go to is to follow animals which are actually thirsty and going to um, any spots to have a drink. Follow these animals and Hopefully, you guys will have a very reliable water source. But once you get your water source, you will definitely have to purify it because bacteria and microorganisms are going to affect your health if you do not have, if you do not filter or purify the water properly. There are three methods in purifying these waters. First of all, would be boiling. Boiling is actually a basic thing that we do until this very day. Second of all, would be uh, distillation. Distillation is more complicated and not really recommended to be done if you're lost in the forest. But last but not least, filtration, which is the basic using stone, sand, gravel, twig, leaves, rocks in order to filter out any dirt or the bugs in the water itself, even though it's not helpful towards a microorganism. That, ladies and gentlemen, is also stated by um, Sean, Sean Ter Terman in 2017, which is nothing is more important than having a suitable drinking water source. This is because it is important. We as human beings, we can live weeks without food. However, without water, we are going to barely survive for a week because of dehydration. So ladies and gentlemen, today, just earlier I have explained that water is very important because it is. Without a, wa without a proper water source, without a clean proper water source, we are not going to survive long. And after we have set up our shelter, our first priority is definitely to find a proper source of water and then potentially purify it. 
Moving on to my last and final point would be scavenging. Scavenging for food is actually very important. Yes, like I said earlier, food is not as important, but food does give us energy. And in order to survive, we need energy. Food, uh, in the earlier stage of camping or being lost in the woods, it's better to just resort to having plants as our resource of food. Um, because um, we do not really want to hurt the habitat, or, uh, not the habitat, the living things around it yet, unless it, we actually have to. But we there are four plants in Malaysia that are actually commonly found in the forest and 100% confirmed that is edible with no food poisoning, no poison, no... No food poisoning, no no, no problems with it. So these plants would be paku pakis, pucu ubi, buah lakum, and also the bush passion fruit. These four are actually the most reliable. But if you found any plants other than these four, then you would have to conduct the universal taste test, which requires you to actually break apart the plant and take each part of the plant, testing it from smell to skin reaction to mouth reaction and also to taste. If any of these... um tests like the nose mouth and skin give any bad reaction or bad um, smell or bad taste immediately throw that plant away or that part of the plant away because that is already considered as it being a red flag of it being inedible or poison or bad or a fungus so other than if you were to live like um, longer in the woods or uh, when you're tra traveling or camping then you would have to resort to actually getting protein from animals which they contain vitamin B12 which is usually contained in the protein of an animal. These animals actually can be like deer, fish, um, cow. So how do you how do you hunt them would be basic which is to have any branch or stick, carve them into a spear and then you may take away and hunt your life away um, and enjoy actually and have make sure to be safe though, make sure to be safe. So as stated by Sean Turman again in 2017, find food to keep yourself alive because in case your situation drags on, you're going to have to catch food, live food actually, because in order to stay alive, you, you are going to have energy to live. If you don't have energy, then it's useless because there are actually been a lot of ways to hunt for food and plants, but both of them have drawbacks and also the benefits. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, today I have explained the three tips, which is first aid, water resource and also scavenging. These three, what do you think? Will you learn them? Or would you actually ignore and neglect what I have said today? In case you have found yourself in these situations, wouldn't it be helpful? My name is Aimee Azuna and thank you for listening to my speech.